Please welcome our superhero sponsor, MSCRM-addons.com and the amazing Bailey Moss, accountant manager by day, superhero by night. Today, Bailey will be saving the day by presenting Easy Document Creation and Automation in Dynamics 365. Please stick around after his session for a live Q&A with a real life superhero. Hello and welcome. Uh, my name is Bailey Moss. I'm an account manager with MSCRM add-ons. First off, I want to thank the, thank the DynamicsCon team for putting on this conference and giving us the opportunity at MSCRM add-ons to present here. Um, what I'll be showing today is easy document creation and automation in Dynamics 365, um, and that's going to be with the help of Documents Core Pack. So first thing I'll do is go over a quick agenda for today's session. Um, so first I'll go over about us, about our company, um, and then I'll go into an overview. This will be a quick slideshow. So it'll be an overview of Documents Core Pack and common use cases, um, then an overview of our Power Platform connector and how it can be used in flows and, and Canvas apps. Um, from there, I'll go into the demo portion with one-click action document generation and how to build a similar one-click action and even go into the template designer. Um, from there, I'll do an example of Power Automate use cases. And if we have time, I'll also go into conditional logic. Um, from there, once it's over, we're going to do a Q&A, um, 15 to 10 minutes. And feel free to ask me any questions you may have um, during that time. So a little bit about us. We were founded in 1998, but we've been doing primarily Dynamics add-ons since 2005. So all the way back when it was still Microsoft CRM and possibly the first usable version, which was CRM 1.2. Um, I'm based out of the US in our Atlanta office, but our main and headquarters is in Graz, Austria. So all of our development sales support is all in-house. We have support 17 hours a day, which crosses European time zone in the US. So from 1 a.m. Eastern time to 6 p.m. Eastern time. Um, that support's available through um, email, chat, or phone. Um, we're a Microsoft Gold Partner. All our products are available and certified on AppSource. And we have seven total solutions, but today I'm gonna to avoid talking about the other solutions and just focus on Documents Core Pack. So Documents Core Pack can really be broken down into three core elements. And what our tools are all about is usability, is end user usability and acceptance. Um, so first step would be design or the first element would be design. So this is gonna be designing your templates. Um, and the way you design templates, if you're familiar with Word, it's just a word add-in to be able to bring in um, fields from your dynamics or common data service environment. Um, and then from there, you can format the fields any way that you would in standard Word. Um, beyond that, and where we really go above and beyond out of box is what you're able to do with those fields and how many relationships you can bring in. So we can support items such as conditional logic where you're, where you're putting in if else, and you can nest those. We can bring in dynamic images or images from a public URL. Um, you can bring in dynamics tables. So an example I'll show today is quoting. So if you wanted to bring in all quotes or all products related to a quote, you can bring that in as a table. If you're running something like a report, you can bring in um, dynamics charts and aggregate data. So instead of showing, you'll actually do a count and you, and you can set that count up to be either in a chart or you, know, you can set it up in a table as well. Um, beyond that, you can sort data, filter similarly to what you can, I mean, almost exactly the same way you can do advanced find except more um, in terms of sorting and setting counts. Uh, we can also do calculated fields, you can set up hyper, dynamic hyperlinks. Um, really, if there's a use case, we've seen it. We don't consider ourselves a vertical solution. So every out of box module and any use case, generally we've seen it. Um, the next out of the elements is going to be generating and processing. So this is once you have your template made, how are you generating it? What's the end user perspective like? So are you using what we have as one click actions where you're setting up a, a, a set of steps where you can have it generate the document, set the document type, whether it's PDF, docx, text, HTML, um, several file formats are supported. Um, and are you attaching that to an email, note, uh, custom activity, or just saving it to SharePoint or just sending it to a printer? That's gonna be the generating and processing. Uh, the third element is gonna be automation. 
So automation was previously achievable through Microsoft Workflow, which we still have our custom workflow actions that you can use if you're on an older version of Dynamics. If you're online, we do, along with Microsoft, recommend using Microsoft Flow, which is, of course, now Power Automate. Um, examples of this is, you know, taking anything that would be user interaction and replacing it with automation. And with Flow, you can also set up approvals. So you don't have to completely take the end user out of the process because um, it is nice to have checks and balances. You can set it up to approve a document before it moves on to the next steps. So we not only support Dynamics 365, we also support Canvas apps and model I mean, and of course all model driven apps, as long as they're based on the CDS or um, Microsoft Dataverse as it's now called. So now we'll get into Documents Core Pack common use cases. Um, being from a sales background, I always think of the sales use cases um, so if you follow the standard Dynamics 365 sales process where you do an onboarding of a new lead, you could send a um, introduction letter through Documents Core Pack because we not only support um, attaching PDFs and other documents to emails or, or other records, you can also send email content. So you can set that up to either be automated. So as soon as a new lead is created, send them a, a welcome letter um, or have it manual. So if you have a list that you're working through, you can also send as a batch. So if you wanted a user to select multiple records and send that intro letter as a batch, you can do that as well. From there, if it's qualified to a contact, you can send them onboarding offer information. From there, if it's qualified to an op and you create a quote, you could have the quote generated, send the quote through Documents Core Pack, um, and then send weekly or monthly follow-ups. You can even automate that as well through Power Automate or implement it in your business process flow. Um, we also support invoice you know, invoices, orders, really if there's any data, um, if the data is in CRM, you can use that to build a pretty and simple template. Um, you can use also multiple templates to generate to a single document for things like responses to proposals or proposals. Um, from there, I've seen a few common use case scenarios through the service side is support requests, automatic responses, um, contracts, you can send work orders. You can even use uh, targeted mar documents core pack for tar targeted marketing. Um, a common theme in, in, in our customers is once you use it in one area of business, it generally spans to the next, um, whether that's sales, service, um, field service, for things like quotes on the fly. If you're using a Canvas app, you can easily generate these documents as well. So from there, we have the Power Platform Connector. Um, we have custom connectors and actions available for Power Automate as well as um, Canvas apps. And what this allows you to do is easily create documents or add a create document step or send email step to an existing flow or new flow or Power Automate. Um, the way Documents Core Pack works is essentially it sends a request to the service, um, which resides in either, if you set it up locally, it's gonna be your hosting in Azure, or if you set it up through us, you can use our online Azure service. So with this Power Automate action, it's essentially sending a request directly to your service versus creating a record in CRM. And so what you can do here to just give you an example of what it's capable of, you can get templates. So if you have a list of templates you wanna bring in and then select from, or if you're using conditional logic in your flow, you can say, if this, bring in this template, if not, bring in this template. From there, you can create the document with that template that you've gotten. Um, you can attach to and send to e send email, save to SharePoint, just as you would through the one-click action, attach to note, print, concatenate, um, concatenation so you can bring in multiple templates and concatenate into a nice single document. So for things like reports or proposal packages where you want to add on the quote or terms and conditions uh, is a common use case. Um, there's a lot you can do with this and I'll actually get into this in my demo. As you can see, Dynamics 365 unified interface in the sales module or sales app. Um, what I'll go ahead and do from here is just show you an easy use case of how simple user interaction can be with uh, one-click action. So first thing I'll do is go ahead and open up a quote. And you can select from the view or the record itself. I'm gonna start with a draft quote. And so I'll go to add on solutions, or actually I'm gonna use the Coho Winery. And once this lo loads, you'll notice on the ribbon, there's a create document button. So that's one of ours. And so from here, once I hit that, there's gonna give me my list of available one-click actions. And these are predefined steps for how your document is generated and processed. 
So in this case, I've built a send quote as PDF. What this is gonna do, as soon as I click it, this is gonna generate the quote as a PDF, create an email, attach the quote to the email, and then create a, another document for the email content. So it'll bring in um, seamlessly as the email content. It'll also fill in the, so this step you have the option to, and you can either skip this step if you wanna set your one-click action up that way, and I'll show that here in a sec. Um, but you have the option to preview, edit, um, and edit the document before it's sent. So you can edit with Word or Word Online. Um, so I'll just go ahead and preview this really quick. So as you can see, it's the quote. It's brought in light customer information, the quote number, create on date, products, line item information. And also you can go more than, unlike out of the box, you can go multiple levels deep. So if you want to go from quotes to quote product to products to price list, can bring in all that information, anything really that's stored in Dynamics. So I'll go ahead and fit, hit finish. And what this is going to do is open up a draft email. You can also have that one click action defined to send it as soon as it's clicked. Uh, but in this case, just to not have quite a few pending emails, I'll, I won't send it. So you can see here, it's also defined the from as the current user, the to as the potential customer, uh, the subject, it's dynamically pulling in the quote number and same thing with the email content. So this is actually a separate template and it says, you know, bring in the quote number. And from this, it's actually going two levels deep. So it's looking at the, from the quote to the potential customer, which is an account. And then looking at the primary contact of that account. I go ahead and open that up just to give you a better view of the, of the document it's created. You can see there, just same information as shown in the preview. So now what I'll go ahead and do is show, show how this process is built. So I'll go back to the quotes. So Documents Core Pack, the template designer is a word add-in that's connected to your Dynamics or CDS um, database. So it's, it's constantly updating all fields, whether custom, out of box, um, new relationships, it'll actually up notify you that you need to update the metadata um, if you make any changes in Dynamics. That way, so template maintenance is much easier. Um, if you do remove a field that's on an existing template, it'll actually show you what field is missing, the missing attribute, so you can just delete it from your template. Um, first thing I'll do though is go ahead and open up my quote and I'll use the quote template that I showed in that one-click action and go ahead and open that up. On the ribbon, you'll notice part of our add-in is the MSCRM add-ons menu. Um, from there, you'll hit insert mail merge fields. And these are all mail documents core pack mail merge fields. And you can format these as well, but just to give you an idea of how easy these are to insert and bring in either, either from the quote entity itself or related entity, I'll just show you how to insert a few. So as well as the valid till, I would also like the payment terms. So I'll just say, payment terms with static text. And of course you have all the formatting capabilities of Word as well. And I'll go into payment terms right there. And you can either select and hit insert field or just double click and it'll insert where your cursor is. And I'll go ahead and save that and save that. Once you hit save template, it's actually saving back to Dynamics that way so that it can be used by all users with our security role or that you've given access to. So I'll hit save, overwrite that. And this also, so saving back to Dynamics and overriding the existing template, any flows, workflows, or one-click actions, it'll use the newest, the updated template since you've overrided that. And from here, just to show this field, since instead of going into Dynamics and having to test this through a workflow or, or you know, mail merge, you can actually just test it within Word. So hit choose data, open up the record, and I'll say, I'll just search and show all since I know we don't have too many quotes in our system and use that same quote that I showed earlier. And now it should update the payment terms. So as you can see, it's now bringing in quote payment, net 45, if I go back just to confirm this information, You can see there, payment terms, net 45. 
Additionally, if I wanted to add a field from a related entity such as product or, or really entity, any entity that has a relationship to quote. So from here, you can add an additional relationship. So go ahead and edit quote product. From there, you will see that these are all the fields that I've decided that I'd like to bring in. I've also added one relationship deeper, which is um, from quote product to product itself. So you have more um, product information there instead of the line item. You can also add filters as well as sorting. Um, you can set whether it's a distinct relationships, you know, same thing as fetch, it's just adding that distinct. Um, you can set a count. You can include lookup fields. Additionally, you can go to a separate entity, but there won't be a relationship there. So it's just a general query, but you can add filters similarly to um, advanced find. Another option versus out of the box is setting the format of date fields as well as calculated fields. So if I wanted to change the format of this valid two, it would just be a selection field properties, and then you can set the format here. So I'll change that to standard, save the template, and then I'll move on to the um, email content template. So I'll go ahead and save that, save it over once more. And then from there, I'll go ahead and open up our email content so we can build this use case all the way through. So I'll just do quotes. Quote email content, go ahead and open that template. So as you'll notice, this is a very simple template being email content, but you can really bring in as much information as I did in the quote. Um, so that it being simple, I'll bring in some additional information. So instead of using a static, um, uh, a static signature, you can bring in signatures from Dynamics, or you can just bring in user information. So if you wanted to bring in current user information, I'll go back to the user, uh, the insert mail merge area. And from here, I can go ahead and I want the current user, the logged on user um, full name. So I'll say add user info. And these are all the related fields, the logged on user, whoever's hitting that create document button or, or set as processing the flow. So I'll go ahead and say full name. And then I'll leave the account manager because I know my user doesn't actually have a job title. I can set the email address here as well. And I'll say email address, let's see here. Let's say email address. Insert first, save that template and then test it really quick and then we'll build out the one click action. So we'll test that as well. Same thing running against the quote. Here, that's the wrong email field. So I'll go ahead and correct that really quick. Save the template and test one more, once more. And run that against the same quote. All right, and there you go. That's bringing the email, but you'll notice it's not a hyperlink. Um, so what we can do is bring that in as a hyperlink um, as well. But in this case, I'll go ahead and move on to creating the one-click action. So now that your templates are created, we can go back into Dynamics really quickly. Um, start from wherever, because you always have the settings available as an admin. So I'll go Settings, Advanced Settings, which brings up the 
um, classic UI settings area. From here, we'll go to the sitemap to documents core pack. And then go into one click actions. And here you have your, your active one click actions are just those entities that you've created a one click action for. Um, you can really use in, add it for any entity, whether custom or out of the box. So you have all your available. I'll go ahead and go to quote. One thing is you can also set these up. So whether you've selected a single record or on that record, or whether you're selecting multiple records, you can run it as a batch as well. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a new single. So I'll recreate the button that I showed earlier. So I'll say send quotes attached email. From there, you can give it a description, but it's not a required field. And then we'll define, um, we'll predefine the template. You can also allow users to select the template or a from a specific um, template group, or you can use multiple templates to create a single document. In this case, I'm going to predefine the template, and I'll use that that template that I just edited, which is 2021 quote. You can also add the ability to edit the template before it's even generated for the end user. But in this case, we'll go ahead and leave that alone. And first thing we're going to do is set the file type. So this is what that document's being generated as, where I'm attaching it, if I'm attaching it. So I'm going to say as email attachment, say who the email sender is and the recipients. You can leave these blank as well. Um, so in this case, I'll do potential customer. And then I'll define my email template, which is that same same one that we just edited as well. Um, from here, so, so from an admin perspective, you can show or hide as much options um, to the end users as you'd like. So in this case, I'm gonna hide these settings and I'm actually gonna remove the review, um, or review step. So as soon as I save this, it should now be available. If I go back to quotes, I'll exit out of here. Refresh this page and I'll actually run this from the view this time. And once I go back to quotes here, and I apologize for the slow load time of my demo instance, um, from here, you can actually yep, just select it from the view. Um, so we'll hit create document, same as before. And what you'll notice is the new button that's available that I just created with the templates we just edited. So if I hit send quote attached to email, this will run through all the steps. the subject, the from to um, attach the quote. So we can look at that one more time just to make sure it contains the, the net 45. So yeah, net 45. And as well as bringing in the username, which is the email and full name of the current user who cr clicked create document. So one nice thing about documents court pack being that we do have our own um, Power Automate actions. You can recreate this easily in Power Automate. I actually created this in about 35 minutes, um, and that included testing. So, so once you go here, I'll go ahead and open up a Power Automate and, and show you what this is, and then we'll give it a quick test. Um, then I'll walk through a few, few other use cases if we have time. So from here, I'm gonna make sure I'm in the right environment first. Yep, that's the right environment. So go to My Flows. And so what this flow's purpose is, it's running through the same actions as, as the one-click action I just built, um, but automating based on quote activation. So as soon as a quote is created as active or um, revised to be active, um, it'll create an email, attach the quote, and fill in the email content um, automatically. And in this case, it'll actually send the email also. So to give a quick walkthrough, actually, I'll go ahead and let's see. I'll actually go ahead and open the all runs page and actually test this really quick. So if I go back to the demo environment and just set a quote to active.
If I go to that same quote and just activate it, it should then kick off this flow. And then I'll walk through each of the steps. And one nice thing about our actions is they can also be added to existing flows as well as, you know, if, if you have anything that wants to be updated. So what this should do is create and send the quote as well as update this send status. So it should let me know whether or not this uh, quote has been sent. So I'll go ahead and activate this. Now that it's been activated, I'll go back to the flow runs page and refresh this really quick. Sometimes it takes just a moment to update, but in my experience, generating two documents as well as the email takes about 37 seconds. Um, so if I go here, I'll walk through each of the steps. So the first thing is the trigger, which is of course, when the quote is created or updated to active, start this flow. The next thing it's doing is it's actually getting the account record because I'm pulling in some account information. So it's pulling in information from the potential customer, which in this case is an account. Um, it's then creating the email record, which is a CDS email. You can also use um, create Outlook email um, or really attach our documents um, anywhere. You might have to use a base 64 conversion if you're using like create a Gmail email. Um, but next thing we're doing in this step is creating the email content from the template. So we've defined the template um, and, and what it's being generated as. We're gonna add, then add the email to that CDS email, or add the email content to the CDS email above. Um, then we're creating the quote and then attaching the quote to the email. And then we're sending the email from there. That final step is just update that record. So now if I go back here, hit refresh, this should now be sent. So it's now, send status is now sent. If I go to the timeline, we should see that, that email that was just created with the flow. So same thing as the one click action. So as you can see, these, this was the original shown, this was the recreated, and this is now the flow, which is the only one that was actually sent. So as you can see, if I open up that record, same status, and I'll actually open up, open up my email and show that that email that I just received because I actually set myself as the primary contact um, for that account. So you can see that there. So from an end user perspective, this is what would be received. As you can see, same, same quote document. Um, so now what I'll go and do is walk through that flow one more time just to show you how how little information is needed to, to add, um, to bring in these actions. So most of them require, you know, one to three inputs. So when I hit create email, all it's looking at is the template name, the entity, the file type, um, and then you can set other items such as timeout, but I generally leave those as default. Um, you can add, same thing with the add to email. So all we're looking at is the previous document and the email message, so that's just two. And update record, standard flow step, um, what we try to do is make it as easy as possible. So if, if I could give an overall, a, a single line on, on documents core back, it'd be to save time in, in all areas where document generation is required and ensure accuracy of information. Because a lot of times what I run into is, is people are still using either cut and paste or, or just a static email template and having to update any fields, uh, having to manually update those emails for the, for the specific use case. Um, but yeah, now I'll just show a quick thing about trial information as well. So go back to my PowerPoint. So now we'll get into trial information and contact info. So we do offer a free 14 day trial with all of our products um, there. You can download it via app source or our website. Additionally, support is included with that 14 day trial. So feel free to reach out to our support team via email, chat or phone. Um, additionally, you can reach out to myself directly. I'd be happy to help if you have any use cases, questions about pricing. Um, we do have pricing on our website for anywhere from one to up to 600 users, which can be found on our online shop. We've got a great knowledge base as well as webinars. Um, and with the time remaining, we're going to have a quick Q&A. So the chat is open. Um, so feel free to ask me any questions now or as well as after the session via email or, or phone. So thank you. Hello everybody, I'm Patrick O'Donnell with MS CRM Add-ons. Uh, no, I'm glad you were able to join me today. I'm here with my colleague, Bailey Moss and Bailey. Thanks for that great presentation. I really appreciate you putting all that together. And now, you know, let's go and step into the Q&A and maybe go over some additional questions. If anybody has any questions for us, please put them in the chat window and we'll try to address those 
through the uh, time that we have remaining. Uh, as we get started, though, um, Bailey, a question I have for you. What are some of your favorite features about Documents Core Pack? Yeah, I was going to go ahead and walk through. So, so a few features. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, um, if possible. So let me see here. I'll go ahead and share screen. Let's see here and share. And a lot of what I like most is on the template design side. I'm more technical, so I do enjoy um, building out of templates and what all we can do versus out of the box. And Pat, I know you're real familiar with, there's not really a use case we haven't seen. Um, so, so if we could ex expand that, there we go, perfect. Um, so I'll go ahead and open up Word. There's not a lot of use cases that we haven't seen uh, from Documents Core Pack on the template or generation side. But what we've really built out through the years is anything you'd like to do with data from CRM, you, you can bring into a template and it's Word-based. So most users are already familiar with Word because it's standardized. Um, how, how from the time you're in school, you're using Word to build your documents, writing papers, then up into work, if you understand relationships in CRM, we make it really easy to create templates. So, so a few of my uh, favorite features is, well, first I'll start with just a standard field, which is what I showed um, showed in my, in my demo that y'all just saw, which is gonna insert Word, let me see here. It appears I'm having a bit of a bandwidth issue. Patrick, can you still see my screen? I can. It, it's it's flickering a little bit, but hopefully that'll just be temporary. Let me go ahead and stop sharing there for a moment. If you wouldn't mind, could you share your screen? It appears I'm possibly due to dueling webinars. I'm having a bit of bandwidth issue. Sure. Let me open up a window here. But yeah, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer right now. Um, if you want to post them in the chat. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, to, to walk through a few just, just out loud, uh, one of the main things is our relationship designer. So one thing that you're limited to out of the box is, is going to be how many link elements. So if you're going from quote to quote products, as, as I showed in the video, that's really what you're gonna be limited to without any type of customization out of the box. Um, whereas we can go, there's not really a limit. In fact, we have a deep fetch analyzer that even if you go up to 10 entities deep, you can really still grab that any needed data. Um, another part about our relationship designer is you can filter those relationships in the template itself um, and, and, and also sort. So, so you can have it show a single record or along with filter and sorting, you can sort your products um, hide, hide different items. Um, and we just got a question from Kim Crawford. Do you have any training links to recommend for beginners? Yeah, so, so I'll go ahead and post in the chat. It's gonna be our, our um, blog is great, or our knowledge base. We've got great videos there as well as our webinars. We've got some great getting started. And we're actually just now starting a new series of a short two to 10 minute videos. Uh, but I'll go ahead and put those in the chat here. Let me see really quick. I'll just go to our knowledge base. So this is going to be our knowledge base, really great articles um, on building out one click actions, specific template design pieces, such as conditional logic, charts, um, really, really anything you can do, we have an article on. Um, and then in terms of training videos, we've got a great webinar base as well. And apart from that, so those, those are really your free options for training. We also have professional services available. So if you want to set up a four hour session with you and your team, one of our template design experts will sit there and help you walk or help walk you through building out a template. So if you have a use case, um, it will. So here, let me go ahead and share this webinar link as well. And Ben, and I wasn't I'll, able to open up my screen. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I did hit the share. So. Oh, no worries. I think, I think I'm actually, it's, I'm in our office to, to fight bandwidth issues and Looks like I'm, I'm having them a little bit. Um, so let me see here if I can reshare. Just give me one moment. Um, insider news for the next updates. I'm trying to think. Anything new that you can think of? We do, given that we're both on the sales side, a lot of times development will, will keep things close to their chest because being salespeople, we love to talk about our product. Um, but in terms of recent new features, um, there's charting. Um, there is editable parts in documents, so no, no longer. And Patrick, you have more experience with editable parts if you want to talk about kind of capabilities and use cases there. 
Yeah, absolutely. Editable parts is kind of hard to understand at first, but once you get the use case, it, I think it drives home. Imagine you're creating a big document, like an RFP response, uh, a big heavy proposal perhaps, and you're going to pull all this information from CRM and put it into a document. But then you're going to have a team work on that proposal or that RFP or that huge monster document. Uh, you're going to want the team to be able to add all their updates to it. They're going to probably work on it for a series of weeks, maybe even a month, putting in everything from, oh, their assumptions and scope and you know, everything else that might go into that document that's not currently in CRM. Now the team goes, works hard at it. They've all agreed that's where they want it to be. But the, but the CRM data has gotten stale. In other words, there's been updates in CRM that they want to refresh into the document to go along with all those comments that they've been hard at work at over the last couple of weeks. So what editable parts does is allows you to designate different sections of the document as editable. So the team will be able to go in and make updates and change those sections and then refresh all that data with new data from CRM to regenerate the document. It's a pretty cool functionality. Uh, yeah, yeah Neil was talking about a couple other, you know, neat new things. Charting is cool. Um, I like the way reports can, you know, and documents can come to life when you suddenly see pie charts and uh, line charts. It's really neat now that you can put in those graphical kind of representations of data into your document. So that charting capability it really can kind of catch people's attention. So you see the data, not just in, in tables and fields, you can actually see it in a graphical representation. Uh, man, going down the list. Uh, yeah, and I was gonna say a lot of this is on the on the template side, on the, on the generation side, which is really, we do separate kind of the pieces. It's all one product, but the capabilities there, you can separate into really, how are you creating this document? And then the template side. So on the generation side, one kind of new feature that's that's big for us and something I love is our, power automate actions. And I showed a little bit of that in my demo, but what you can do with that is, I mean, really it's, it's almost too, um, it's almost too much to say because you're like, what's, what's possible there. You're like, give me 30 minutes and I'll tell you if that's possible. And that's, that's what we've built out is create documents. So you can take existing flows and use those triggers to, to add a document step, whether you're attaching it to an email um, notes or saving it somewhere in CRM, saving it to SharePoint, saving it even, if you have a connector to say like Dropbox or something like that, if you want to generate that file, pull that file in, we, we can, you can send it through our service and generate it. Um, and, and really there's several actions you can do um, within Power Automate. And that's, that's one of my favorite new things just because it's fun to see what, what is possible, which I've yet to really meet a limit there in terms of use cases that we've uh, been reached out to about. Um, and, I and I should be able to now share my screen, I believe. Um, give me one moment here and I'll go ahead and share and see if this works. And let's see, share screen. Yeah, as you pull that up, you know, I got to talk to one of the CRM user groups about, you know, Power Automate. It was kind of neat, kind of incorporating some of Microsoft standard pieces into Power Automate along with our document core pack solutions. Uh, Microsoft came out with that new approval uh, step. And you can only imagine how you can put in document generation along with using the Microsoft's approval process to then come out with a document approval process. I mean, it, it's really cool stuff that you can do with Power Automate, with our custom connectors, along with all the other helpful pieces that are out there. It really does open up that whole world. But go ahead, Bailey, were you able to share? Your yeah, so, so it looks like I am now able to share my screen. So to walk through a few of those, another part of the generation side is both within our one-click actions, which are those predefined buttons, and flow, you can add conditional aspects for selecting the template. So if you have different states, um, different opportunity types, case types that you want to sp select automatically a specific template, you can bring those in. On the other side of that, within your template, you can also put in conditional logic and you can actually add quite a bit of heavy logic here. Or you can keep it as simple as if else, or you can nest them into if else, if else, if else, and really create some very cool scenarios. I've seen them where I've actually had to write them down on paper to make sure the logic made sense. If else, like going down a logic tree. Uh, but yeah, so if you can see my screen now, I'm going to go ahead and insert a, a simple field. So I'll just do um, case title. I'll be, do this on cases since my whole demo is around sales. So might as well go into service. Um, so, so that's just inserting a field. Now I'm going to insert one of our very cool options, which is our condition designer. So I'll go insert field 
advanced options here. Let's see here. And don't want to DocuSign. And you see we have several advanced options here, inserting as HTML, um, which is something I'll bring up here shortly. But I'll go ahead and insert a condition field. And from there, we can go ahead and let me help them. zoom in, exit out of here and zoom in my Word doc a bit so you, I can see a little better. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and insert field and go to a condition field. And that allows me to actually design an if else condition. Very simple. So I'll say um, this will be case type. And I want to say if met, bring in data. If not, bring in something else. You can create an else block. So if else. And then I'm going to set my condition, which will be case type. And I will set it to, let me make sure, I'll set it to question. So if the case is a type is a question, then it'll be, it'll bring the data. If else, it'll bring something else. So just to give you an example of how that works, you have two, what are essentially text boxes. Um, I'll bring in, and this will be the case type. And you can also bring in data. It doesn't, have, it can be static or dynamic. Uh, what you put into these text boxes, you can bring in entire paragraphs, tables, um, images. Uh, but in this case, I'll just keep it simple. So this is just a simple if else. So the case is a question, not always the best typer when when being watched. Um, and then the case is not a question. And to show one of the, and I'll go ahead and save this template back so it can be tested. But to show one of the, let's see here. To show one of the less talked about features, but possibly the favorite of most is going to be our actually how you can test templates. You don't have to go into CRM. You don't have to run a flow or workflow to test these templates. You can test them directly in Word. So if I just, I'll just do to be called case demo. And as soon as that's saved back, I can actually test this directly within Word. Um, and it should show me whether or not the case is a question type or not. And you can set up multiple conditions as well as said within each condition. Um, and so if I go ahead here to test the template, I'll hit choose data. And from there, we just choose a record to test against. Let's see if it has case type on here. Nope, so I'm playing a little blind. So I'll see if this is a question type case. And this should now load up with the, the result here. So the case is not a question type. And I can actually go check that really quickly in CRM. If I go to Sales Hub. This might be getting a little too in-depth, so I'll go back to kind of the, the, the rest of the features. But just to show you how, how easy it is um, to build out something that's normally you'd have to build out in, in code or a word field, um, whereas we have a designer where you simply build it out just like you would an advanced find. Um, so if I go to cases, you can see here the, we'll go to the type really quick and make sure that's there. And yeah, so it's a type request. So yeah, so this case is not a question. And that's kind of a long drawn out version of you know how, how this looks at if else. Um, another very cool thing, which I, I mold over very quickly is in the insert mail merge fields, this is one of the items I wanted to bring up since it's a newer feature of Dynamics, is those rich text, um, rich text fields within Dynamics. So out of the box, if you insert one of those fields and bring them into a template, they're gonna come out as HTML. Um, so, so you can't really bring them into a document nicely. What we have along with rich text, you can insert any HTML. If that HTML exists in a field in CRM, we can insert it as HTML and it will read back as you formatted it in HTML. So you can create really nice templates. You know, if you're creating an email template and you want to use HTML, you can just bring that all into a document. It'll format it um, and, then, and then display as, as you've defined it. Uh, and I've been kind of going for a while. Is there any features that you'd like me to walk through or that you'd like to walk through, Patrick? And I, or I can just keep on, keep on keeping on. Yeah, you know, down to like 15 or so minutes left. I, you know, I, I didn't know if there were key features you wanted to focus on or maybe move the conversation over to some of the common questions that often come up regarding doc, Documents Core Pack. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I think a few, a few of the common ones are definitely the most common. Just because it's uh, normally an out of box limitation is how many entities deep can you go from uh, from one record or one relationship down, and we have no real limit. I would say talk to us if it's beyond 10, because generally data doesn't go beyond 10 relationships in a template that you're pulling. Um, other ones would be, I guess, a, a lot around cost when it comes to the sales side. So cost, we'd be happy to discuss, but there's standard, pat we sell licenses in tiers. So it's, it's one to 10 users, um, 11 to 30, 31 to 80, and then so on and so forth. And we've got a great licensing model that we're always happy to work with. Um, we're always happy to discuss. We've got a great tool that's similar to a dashboard um, within Documents Core Pack and our other products, which allows you to see what users are being counted and why um, for, for use cases. I'm trying to think. Other common questions is e-signature. Do we provide e-signature? We don't directly provide e-signature, but we integrate with Adobe Sign, AssureSign, and DocuSign. And we have a great um, connection with those, um, those partners to be able to easily take any Documents Core Pack template add a signature field and then send it through their services. So we're doing the heavy lifting of creating the document and they're doing the heavy lifting of making sure that is a legally acceptable document and they're doing the yeah, tracking Bailey, back. Bailey, as a follow up on that, no, I mean, the documents core pack piece is <laughs> with the e-signature functionality, we've had some great success with that. I can think of my own favorite. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry, Bailey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Oh, okay, it's just that delay in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, my biggest pet peeve used to be non-disclosure agreements, NDAs. People would go and send me a file and say, Pat, sign this. And my desk is in the basement, so I would go and send it to my printer, which for some reason is on the top floor of my house. So I'd run upstairs to the printer, get the NDA, then I'd try to find a pen. I'd grab a pen, run back downstairs, uh, sign the document, and then scan the document, save it on a thumb drive, plug it into my computer, and then send the signed document off. Can you imagine how that whole NDA process can go so much smoother with the signature? I mean, somebody will simply send you the non-disclosure agreement. Uh, the reason the three largest signature e-signature providers, DocuSign, AssureSign, and Adobe Sign have partnered with us is because they know we can easily make documents out of Dynamics 365 data. And we recognize they do a great job on the e-signature piece. So you've gone through that whole multi-step process to now, if someone can just send an NDA, you electronically sign it and it's just done. I mean, you could do that <laughs> uh, in moments. And I do want to also mention the speed on that. If you haven't looked into e-signature before, sales teams can often save an incredible amount of money by shortening the sales cycle. I did work with one group that said that after they submitted a quote, it often took three weeks to a month for it to go to each person that had to sign the document. And once they implemented uh, Documents Core Pack, in this case with DocuSign, they were able to dramatically shorten it to under a week. Uh, they were able to just push that right out, and most of them ended up being closed in, in a three-day time period. So as far as you know, closing a deal, that was a huge, huge impact for that customer. So. So now just a couple stories around the e-signature part you were talking about, Bailey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really e-signature is a big a big part of it. As, and like you said, I mean, how much time you can save when implementing e-signature. And what we really handle is the template side uh, of that and how much data you can bring in. And also, one thing I didn't mention, or I don't believe I mentioned in the demo, was multi-part documents. So what we call a multi-part is, is multiple templates so you can build you can have a separate template for your terms and conditions for your quote, and then maybe an NDA or a, a, a proposal signature. You can have those all separate templates and only one of them needs to be e-signature to combine into a single big PDF and send through e-signature to be filled out. So say you're working an opportunity and you've sent the quote and you've done the proposal, but now you just need the signature. But really what you wanna do is make sure you have everything in one document to send and record that it's been signed. So everything's there to be signed off on. You can then hit create document and have predefined your multiple documents that you need, and it'll create a single document and be signed off, um, which which is a, I mean, I see it used almost, I'd say in most implementations, I'll see at least one multi-doc scenario, um, whether whether it's for contracts, proposals, or just for 
salespeople <laughs> figuring out where they are in the opportunity process by seeing what's been done there. You can send yourself a report. Um, and I'm trying to think of a, a few, it's not really a common question, but I'd say a, a common happen, a happenstance, um, if that's the correct word, is what we see a lot is we'll get one use case and it'll be a specific use case, whether it's quotes, they need a system for responding to support cases that looks at you know automatic replies, email content, whether it's automated follow-up or just making things so you don't have to copy and paste text into your emails, making that a lot quicker. What we often see is one scenario turns into two, which turns into four, which turns into eight. Generally, we see these documents go from you know one to two use cases to once someone sees how easy it is to build out a template and build out the process, it often gets, you know, how can I do this? How can I do that? Um, and, and that's my favorite kind of scenario is when, when multiple parts of the business ex start accepting use of it and then saving time. And I had that question. Oh yeah. Another common question that, you know, comes across to me is what's it going to take to implement all of this? Uh, a lot of people are kind of expecting a solution that has this much features and functionality to be a pretty large implementation effort. Most of them are surprised that we make it available so that you can go directly to the Microsoft app source store, begin downloading it yourself today. You don't have to even talk to me or Bailey. You can, because each of our products, and we do have seven add-on solutions altogether, Documents Core Pack being one, but all seven are Microsoft certified. They're all in the Microsoft App Source store, and they all have free trials with built-in trial licenses. We often have people download the solution, begin configuring it, begin using it, and then come up to us saying they want to buy it. I mean, it, we really do try to make it, you know, quick to download, uh, fairly intuitive to configure, and really to get these powerful tools in people's hands so they can begin creating basic templates very quickly, uh, you know, without much expense in, you know, in time or resources. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, oh, yeah. No, sorry, keep going. I was, <laughs> I was just going to say, it's, it's really, it's funny how many, mostly we deal with, you know, technical people, consultants or otherwise, and it's almost... There's almost a fear that it's too easy how, how we make the process because it is a single, it's either a single download or a single service start that's handling the setup of, of the service that's doing the document generation and pushing all the solutions in, as well as you can say, all right, apply all the needed security roles to my users for me. It's all in one step. I actually get some concern around it can't be, you know, what what's next? Um, but it's really just we've we've tried to make the trial or both trial and installation into multiple environments as simple as possible. Yeah. Another thing that people ask about the trial a lot of times is, well, is this just a thin down or slim version? No, these are fully functioning versions of our products. In fact, we often have people start off with a trial, like what they set up, and then they just move forward with applying their purchase license directly to it. So, uh, and, and that's something kind of our philosophy. We really believe strongly in people trying out our products, making sure they love them, and then, and then coming up with a purchase decision. Uh, as you go through that trial period, we do make it easy to start a trial, but we also help you out along the way. Uh, our support team is available 17 hours a day, Monday through Friday, knock it off at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Why such a strange number of hours, 17? It's because our home office is based in Austria. And those guys start early and then a little later in the day it rolls over to our support team in atlanta so we do have pretty solid coverage and we do provide that free support during the trial period i guess what people also often ask me is you know how about our support i think we've got one of the best support teams and part of the reason is is because all of our solutions we do develop internally we have the same guys on the team that develop these products so when they're, you know, if you ever do have questions, we have we've had people working on this product for the past 18 years. We've got a wealth of experience of people that know the product in and out, know document generation and processing, use cases and scenarios. And if you do have something that you think is fairly unique to you and your team, don't struggle. Don't bang your head against the wall trying to figure it out yourself. Shoot a message to support at mscrmadonstick.com. And more often than not, they'll be able to put you on the right track. 
Yeah, it looks it looks like we've got five minutes left, and I'm gonna apologize. My headset was dying earlier, so I dropped off for just just a little bit. Um, along with our support team, all of our developments in house. So we're always happy to talk about new. We got asked in the chat, which was you know any new features. One thing that we build a lot of our new features off of is someone says, "Hey, can it do that?" And if it can't do that, we look at either a customization or just baking it right into the product. So I mean, even. I believe even the, the text parts, um, editable text parts, was actually just a customer request. And we said, you know what, we, that's a great idea. We should add that. And like Patrick said, this has been around for, for quite a while. And that has really built up like a, a tool with as many options as, as it has. I always say when I'm doing a training is, you know, I could spend 24 hours. We need to start with a use case because if not, I could spend 24 hours straight just talking about what else can it do? You know, what's next? Um, and, and some more of those features, I mean, unless you can think of another common question, it's funny when on the spot, I'm trying to think, I mean, we get asked questions or use cases all day, um, nearly, but if you'd like, I can go back into, um, kind of some of the cool, cool options, um, as well. And, and some of our favorite features of, of template design or the generation. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I can go ahead and go into some, uh, yeah, so, oh, in that case, it looks like we've got three minutes left. I don't think I could get through through a feature. Um, yeah. So thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, feel free to reach out to us, uh, stop by our booth, uh, email myself or Patrick, or just invite us for a quick meeting. Uh, we'll be here until, I believe, five o'clock at our booth. Uh, but yeah, and after that, feel free to give us a call, our main number, direct. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining and, and watching.